So they became married. So one more time, zakah is two types. There is zakah which is an obligation and there is zakah which is nafal, recommended and encouraged. And the zakah which is an obligation we mentioned, either it is a zakah upon the individual or it is a zakah due upon the wealth. And the, za- and the zakah which is due upon the wealth is due upon four types of wealth. To whom do we give zakah? Who do we give zakah to? So there are eight groups of people to whom zakah is given. Eight groups of people to whom zakah is given and nobody else besides them. Naam. So firstly the faqir. And who is the faqir? So the fuqara and the masakin. And what is the difference between the faqir and the miskin? And here in this ayah, there's a difference between the faqir and the miskin. The faqir is the one who is completely poor and possesses nothing. Or he possesses something, however it is below what suffices him. And this is what we have to explain. So now this brother who is poor and all of us are poor in front of Allah, we have to calculate how much does he require on an annual basis. Why? Because zakah is always given on an annual basis. So if we take a round figure and we say, that this person who lives here, he requires a thousand pounds a month to live. Therefore, on an annual basis, he requires 12,000 pounds just to live. This 12,000 pounds, this is the minim, minimum amount of wealth which he requires just to live. So it's not a luxury of buying Porsches or Mercedes, rather the minimum amount which he requires to live. When we're giving these examples, uh, we're not joking, but we're giving these examples and scenarios so we can understand and relate. So when Sheikh Ibrahim comes and he's a rich, wealthy businessman, and he says to this poor one, how much do you require to live throughout the year? So uh, Ibrahim says to the poor brother, how much money do you require on an annual basis just to live, just to suffice? And he mentions that I require 12,000 pounds sterling. And then he says to him, okay, how much do you actually own? And he replies that I don't possess anything. And then Ibrahim replies that you are poor. And if he replies that I have 5,000 pounds, he is still poor. Because 5,000 is less than even half of what he requires. If he said I have 7,000 pounds, then we say to him that you are a miskin and not a fuck. And if he said I possess 12,000 pounds, says that you are wealthy. So if the person possesses, the amount which suffices him on an annual basis, then he is, we consider him to be rich and wealthy. And if he has less than half of what he requires to suffice him, then he is considered to be faqir. And he, if he has more than a half, however beneath or less than that which he requires to live and suffices him to live, then we consider him to be miskeen. And Allah subhanahu wa said that verily the sadaqat, i.e. the zakah, it is lil fuqara wal masakin. It is for, meaning it is to be given to the poor and the masakin so they can possess it. Meaning, Sheikh Ibrahim, he gives to the poor person his zakah and he makes it his ownership and he possesses it for the whole year to feed him and his children. And then the second group of people who deserve our zakah are the l'amilin. So we said, that this brother, he gave three million pounds of zakah. And he said to this person, that you know the situation of the poor people in your locality. So you go take this zakah and go distribute it to them. So this person, he kept two million in his pocket and the remaining million from the three, he began to distribute to the poor. And when we asked him, that why did you not give the full three million? Why did you give the two, why did you give one million and save the two million in your pocket? He says, that I am from those people who are tasked with distributing the zakat. Don't you recite the Quran? So the meaning of wala amilina alayha are those people who have been tasked and made responsible with the collection and the distribution of zakat are those people who have been appointed by the state, the Muslim state. Like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu an and he appointed him as the collector and the distributor of zakah. So those people are deserving of zakah as well. However, if a wealthy person, he appoints a person personally to go distribute zakah, then he does not come under this category. Unless the wealthy person from his own money and not from his zakah, he gives him some wealth.
And then the third category of people who are deserving of zakah are the new Muslims. And this is one of the biggest problems in Europe. Somebody who has been a Muslim for six years and he still considers himself to be a new Muslim. If you ask him to learn, he'll say new Muslim. Do this, I'm a new Muslim. But when it comes to marriage, now he's an old Muslim. So everything, and this person, he keeps making the excuse that I'm a revered Muslim or a new Muslim. Whereas Sa'ad radiallahu an, six years uh, of Islam, of him being a Muslim, and when death approached him, the throne shook. Until when is this excuse going to be used to justify a person's actions? Every time something is requested, like come study Tawheed, come seek knowledge, then the same excuse is mentioned that I'm a new Muslim or a revert to Muslim. So the point is that the one who is new to Islam, perhaps a week since he has accepted Islam or a short amount of time since he has accepted Islam, zakah can be given to that person to make his heart firm upon Islam. And then the next category of people who are deserving of zakah are, <laughs> are those who we want to emancipate through the zakah. So we don't give the zakah to the slave because if it's given to the slave, perhaps the master will take it and keep it. Rather, we ask the master that how much would it cost for the emancipation of the slave and then zakah is given in order to emancipate and free the slave. And then the next category of people are the ghari. What is the intended meaning of al ghari mean? I.e. a person who has a debt upon him. So the meaning of al ghari mean i.e. those who have a debt upon them. And this does not mean that somebody like Sheikh Ibrahim, he buys a Mercedes and he buys it on installments and then he thinks, okay, now zakah can be given from the Muslims. And therefore, give me your zakah so I can pay off the installments of my Mercedes. So this is not the intended meaning of a person who has a debt upon them. Rather, like a poor person, for example, and he needs to buy food, or perhaps he has to buy a room, and he has debts upon him, zakah can be given to help that person. As for a rich person who wants to buy, a, who has bought a Mercedes or a villa on no. installments, and then wants the zakah of the Muslims, no zakah is due for him. So we have to look at what caused the debt. And then the zakah is not given to the person who is in debt. No. Rather, zakah is given to the one to whom the debt is owed. Meaning, we go to the person to whom the debt is owed and we ask him how much is the debt and he mentions the amount. And then we give the wealth to him to fulfill his debt. If we give it to the person who owes the debt, maybe he will buy more with it and he will not, I mean, and he will not fulfill his debt. And then the next group of people to whom zakah is given is the saying of Allah wa fi sabilillah in the path of Allah. And what is the intended meaning of fi sabilillah? So every avenue of goodness, is that correct that zakah, is it correct that zakah can be given in every and any avenue of goodness? It's not correct. So the intended meaning of fi sabilillah is not every avenue of goodness or every project of goodness. Because if this was the intended meaning, then the ayah would have been sufficient for it to say that sadaqah has to be given fi sabilillah. Because fi sabilillah would then include within it the poor and the masakin and all the other types. So when Allah subhanahu wa specified eight groups of people, then the intended meaning of fi sabilillah is a jihad fi sabilillah. However, the fi sabilillah towards which zakah can be given is that which is conducted under the Muslim ruler and where everything is clear. It's not for any and every person who begins to attack a country and then wants the zakah of the people. And then the next person who is deserving of zakah is Ibn Sabil. And the literal meaning of Ibn Sabil is the child of the road. You would say that it is the son of so and so. But when Ibn Sabil is used, meaning somebody who has traveled and left his family, and then during his journey he has been cut off from his provisions. Like, for example, a person who travels from Britain and travels to Medina and he's in, intending to do Hajj or Umrah, and whilst he's on his journey, he's completely cut off from his provisions. So nowadays, the majority of people, they cash 
it is accessed digitally, whether it's through their phones or through their uh, cards. So if you have a person who was on a journey and he lost his phone and he lost his card, and so you say to him, look, take money from the bank. And he says, look, my bank is in Britain and I have no phone calls, no access to my bank. This is Ibn Sabil. 